So, well, my name is uh, Pablo. I'm the NetFilter maintainer, and I'm going to uh, introduce you to this NetFilter mini workshop presentation. Um, I'm going to start with some slides that I have prepared, and then Florian Westphal, he will follow up to discuss some ongoing stuff uh, he's basically currently working on. So, um, So what, what am, am I going to cover in this presentation? Basically, um, this is not a tutorial. So those that are new to NF tables and NetFilter in general, they are in uh, about NetFilter. We have a well-established uh, documentation base available on the internet, so that you can reach uh, specifically for those that um, that already were playing around with IP tables. They probably know Oscar, Andreaso, and documentation. It's quite, quite extensive and detailing all uh, specific as aspects of IP tables. We don't have something like that in NFT yet. It would be great to have it. So, so far what we have is basically this wiki nftables.org page that we are getting some users and developers involved in, in, updated this, in updating this documentation um, in, an, in an agile way. We have also, well, I made several presentations already in the past. There is a YouTube video that um, a very cool user group in, in the Netherlands that invited me to talk about NF tables made. Uh, it's basically me on a whiteboard just typing, write, writing NFT commands and so on and explaining the thing. And there is also the MAM page that is now quite large. There has been some debate on, on splitting it up already. So that may happen at some point because it's Quite, quite extensive. It's more like a reference. I mean, as, as all man pages, just a reference. Just in case you need to know more, something more specifically, you go there and you retrieve what you need. And um, and well, all, all other other uh, random documentation that you can find that users as are starting to to write about it. So now, uh, what is NF table? So it's it's a replacement for IP IP6 EB. ARP tables. We've been using that intended to be probably, I think that it's good to remove it. I, yesterday I entered in the wiki page and I already uh, put that scratch on, on that intended. We have almost 70% of the features that we have in IP tables. And if we, perf if we make a one to one mapping, but we already have more features already in NFT that were not available in IP tables actually because we, our language, a new language is way more expressive. So we are already having new features that we didn't have before. So um, one of the main features that I would like to highlight of NFT is the fact that we, um, we provide a generic set infrastructure that we can use to, to make maps, to build dictionaries. And, um, and if, I mean, it requires a, 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 a slight a change in the mindset for the user. For those that have been already using IP set, it's probably going to be easier. But for, for others and dot, basically the idea is that um, uh, defining your policy in, uh, uh, in, 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 in linear rules is not good. It's something that you should avoid. So what you have to do is you have to rearrange your rule set to based on the dimensions that you have, the number of, of key selectors that you are going to inspect in the packet, meta information or really real information in the packet and based on that quickly find an action to, to perform on that on that packet. So currently um, the current version is NFT 0.7. It was released just yeah, several days because before Christmas. Um, NFT 0.8 is cooking, it's almost ready. Probably release it by when next kernel is released or by that time probably. Let's see. And, and I'm going to cover also updates that are going to come with, with, with that new version in this presentation. So before going forward, I would like to show some performance number because there have been performance number being shown in this conference and I would like just to do a bit of myth, myth buster. We are not so slow, okay? We are not so slow. We, we are, if we do filtering using this rule from NFT ingress, we are achieving actually twice, almost twice. And we are still doing this from ingress. I mean, if I already talked to Tom, where is Tom? Uh, I would like to have a hook in NXDP so people 
can either use programmable stuff or if they are afraid of programming in C, Go, Python, whatever, they can still stick to rule-based languages. This is good to them. So in that case, we, we will, in that filter, we will benefit from performing this early hook for those specific use cases that has been discussed in this conference. So, new features that we got. So we got a new expression, the FIP. It basically allows us to inquire the forward internet base. Uh, it's something that Florian made. We've been discussing about this for a while. It's actually maybe a very cool feature. It int integrates very well in into what we have. So basically, all the routes that you add through the Nelly interface that we have already in the kernel, um, and all that database available already in, 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 the, in, the, in the FIP, we can, we can use it to, to, to perform queries. And the syntax is, looks, it's, oh, this. Yeah, this is the pointer. So it's here. So basically, we have the FIP that identifies the, the, um, the instruction, and then we have a key. The possible keys that we can use is source address, destination address, mark, input interface, and output interface. This source address, it can be used either for IPv4 or IPv6 traffic. We want to have good integration of NFT into dual stacks and so on. It's, it's, it's already well known that we are going to have to live with these deployments for, for a while, right? So we want to keep it easy for uh, system administrators so they don't have to keep dealing with all that duplication. I have seen friends of mine in, in Spain has been showing me very, very crazy scripts to maintain these IP tables and IP6 tables rule sets in sync that sometimes break and things get inconsistent and so on. That's something that we don't we definitely don't want to keep we don't want to keep in that in that in that domain. Okay? So um, these keys you can combine them for not, not for developers. So basically we are populating the flowy or flowy six structure in the kernel. This is mapping to that. The concatenation feature basically allows us in the NFT to concatenate any kind of, any kind of key. Okay? In this case, the number of keys is restricted to what we are currently exposing. We have more keys in Flowey, but we just started to do something simple and the users can with more use cases, valid use cases to, to explore more, more, more of those fields. So um, over there, you get a simple concatenation. So basically, this is going to use the source address and the input interface as key to, to inquire the, the FIP. And, and then you get data. The data is the, the, the right side of the mapping that the FIP provides, basically. And the three type of data that you can fetch that is attached to that key, that is linked to that key, is the output interface, the output interface name. So we want to handle also a scenario with dynamic, dynamic interfaces, tap, turn, and all that kind of stuff that just shows up and then goes away. And so um, basically, the name provide, provide a persistent way to, to without having to trigger uh, rules or updates with, without depending in, in the interface index. And we can also match based on the address type. We, basically, we have unicast, loc local, Broadcast, any cast, multicast, black hole, unreachable, and prohibit. This is basically mapping to um, to the FIB, to the FIB is allowing us actions. Some of those, right? For example, black hole or prohibit. And the operator, I just I have just shown the most relevant operators, but our language is very expressive, and it's not like like in IP tables where you have one extension where you have built in all the things that you can do, is that you can, you can combine things and, and build and, 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 and achieve more develop, a more developed way to represent the thing through, through, through maps. So uh, more specifically, just to mention the vertical map that also allows us to, based on what we find from the, from the feed, match a value and relate a verdict to, do, to perform on the packet. Or simply maps just to, um, use the, the information that we get to, to plug it into another, into another statement that we have in the language. So here you can see a list of examples on how, to, how you can use the FIP expression. 
So basically, um, the first rules, the, the first, oh, sorry. So basically, the first rule there just uh, implements the, the reverse pass filtering, the classic one that we have in, in, in with implemented, with, that, we, with, that we perform with the RP filter thing in, in AP tables. And we could also filter, I mean, just say if there is no, this missing thing, it's a Boolean, Boolean thing that we have, that it was field suited that it has introduced quite recently. We have two possible values exist and missing. It's basically mapping to, to it's telling the kernel to, to just to, to tell that I don't want to, I don't want specifically the interface index to be returned, but just tell me if, if there is one or not. And, um, this, this all the rule is just there to drop uh, packets to addresses that are not configured on the interface. And the last one shows you a example of the verdict map. So basically here, um, it's, setting, it's setting the packet mark to dead that is going to be used in the, in the inquiry that we are going to perform on the FIP. So basically the topos that we use is the destination address and this mark. And that's based on the type of the address that we obtain. So it's black hole. We are going to perform some action on the packet. This would require defining this non-based change. This is prohibited. But basically, for black hole and reachable, we are just dropping packets. OK? What's next? So good things about the FIB. As I said, it integrates well into what we have. People are using Quagga or BGP. Uh, demos quite, in, quite massively, right, in their data centers. So this, there have been users asking that, uh, finding and just using this in new, new um, feature to integrate this into remote trigger black hole through BGP. So basically from, from, the, route, from the router, that, uh, the trigger router, we are going to distribute routes to the edge routers in case that there is a attack to one of the um, uh, servers in our network, so we basically want to avoid that our entire network get, gets flooded. So from the edge, we just black hole that. This is something that should be easy to integrate, and we could even actually um, um, uh, we could we could we could do we could do this way earlier from ingress. This is not supported yet, but I've I've been discussing these changes with Florian yesterday, and it's just a matter of basically dealing with. Uh, the, the assumption that it doesn't stand anymore in the, in the ingress path, that is that the IPv4 header or IPv6 header may not be linear. So it's just a matter of using the, the SKB header uh, copy function that allows us to just to make sure that is, we, have, we have the full header there, right? So it's a very, very simple change. And it will be good to, to get that merge for the next. Probably we can get, we can get some of the Google Summer of Code People are going to join us soon into that small task. It can be a good thing to, to for them. So it's basically stuff good for junior people. What else? Um, we got a new uh, routing expression that allows us to match on the, inform the meta information that is already attached to the escape buff. Uh, the syntax is RT key, generic operator, and, and an expression. The expression can be a value, but it can, can be also a map. Right? So, and keys that we support now is the class ID. So basically, allows us to match based on the routing realm. And um, uh, specifically, uh, the user that has uh, contributed this update who was very interested, in, interested in, in knowing the next hop. Right? So, um, just to show you an example of what this user had been using, he was, this first rule basically he was very concerned about. Uh, having receiving from BGP routes that were not correct, so he was basically using NFT to make sure that he was not getting the right, the right, the wrong route, right? And and then so it's conformance, conformance check basically, and and then he was also combining the this feature, this new feature with flow tables. Flow tables are basically using the set infrastructure that we have in a kernel. Basically, what 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 this what it, this does this this command here, this flow table, we, we, we use a name, the name of the flow table is NH, from, stands for next hop. And that set is going to be populated with the data that we fetch from the RT next hop. 
And every entry that is going to be inserted in this flow table, we have a timeout of 10 minutes, and we also attach a counter. This thing, the flow table, is basically um, avoiding us to have, because in EP tables, for those that you know, it's, we have hash limits, right? We have received in the patch patches to do hash quota, hash limit, hash whatever. And, and we've been stopping that because we didn't, go, we didn't want to, to keep bloating the kernel with all these Frankenstein combinations of all the features that can be useful. So, so this just provides a flexible way to have all, those, all, the, all that flexibility that was, that was lacking in IP tables, right? We could obviously, obviously also dump the flow table here you have, and, and then you get the list of elements, the counters, right? And here it's missing. It, this is because of the copy and paste. It should be a timeout there, right? It's a mistake probably that I made when making these slides. Sorry about that. So what else? No track. This is a very simple one. It's been missing for a while, and it seems to be very important for users. There are users. Um, basically indicating that for some traffic they don't want to do a stateful uh, filtering, okay? They don't want they don't want contracting. So we just have a very simple one. It's as you can see, it's just you just specify here no track. This rule is basically telling that all traffic going to port 80 is not going to be uh, it's not going to be contracted. Okay, this one is a simple one. Uh, and it's important as needs to be, needs to happen before priority 300. That is where we have, where, where the connection tracking hook is registered. And um, we want to have, talking about priorities, something that people have been asking on the mailing list, so they don't, ca they don't have to keep all these numbers, priority, num priority, num priority numbers in their, in their head. So we, we could introduce labels that provide the, the, the full priority for, many of these chains that we have in IP tables so should be easy, easier to keep in mind, right? This is something to, that we would like to have too, but we don't have it so far. And yeah, another extension is the quota extension. This quota only supports packet-based quota at this stage, but it should be, uh, sorry, byte-based by, byte quota. It should be easy to, to implement for the, to, to extend it to support packet base. Uh, it's, the syntax is quota, the over thing, just tell me, tell, 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 tell uh, NFT if uh, you want to match, if the, if the quota, if you go over quota, or if you, if you don't specify, it's going to match if you are under quota, okay? That is the default behavior. And then we have to specify a value, a unit, and this unit can be bytes, megabytes, or so far I think it's this is what we're supporting. And and as I said before, we could we could combine this new quota extension so you don't have to add like in AP tables one rule per per quota you want to enforce. And so this is basically implementing this hash quota thing. We are going to add in this HTTP table uh, based on the source address. We add a timeout, and we, we set a quota of 50 megabytes for that given flow. It's a flow-based way to define quota. Um, the payload is not a new one. It has, existed, it has existed since the beginning. But uh, it has been extended to, to deal with something that users have been asking for, is that basically if uh, people wanted to have some way to perform stateless NATs, there are some scenarios where this is valid. It's a bit tricky. I mean, this is that not, you have to be careful with them. It's, it's easy to shoot yourself on your f own feet, right? So, um, but for very specific scenarios like load balancing, it really makes sense and we we provide a more light way to do that than, than the full-blown connection tracking thing. For example, there are scenarios where, where you only want to, uh, you're, you're only going to see traffic going in one direction, right? So even contract is not going to be very good at that because we will have an entry in new state with a very low timeout. And what, we intelli what we, we've been telling users so far is that you realize that timeout as a way to work around that is very ugly. So that doesn't need to happen anymore. 
And it's very simple syntax. It's basically IP, source address, destination address, and set, and you and the expression that can be a value, again, a map that you plug. So you just look up quickly based on some key what IP address you want to apply. This shows one example where basically the source address is going to be set based on num gen, this generation, this number generation. It's basically telling that do it incrementally and bound it to up to two. So it's just counting 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. And based on that, we are going to set the, uh, the source address. OK? Actually, the, uh, this example, I wanted to use destination address. That makes more sense for load balancing, OK? So just another mistake there. More updates. So we have uh, NF lock infrastructure. That has been there for a long, long time. It relies on, on the kernel lock, like kernel lock buffer through all those P, PR underscore thing. It just uh, prints the packet in a human readable way. It's something that users, um, it, it has in, he, its own problems, but users seem to like it because it reduces the amount of infrastructure that you can keep. You don't need to keep a user demo in user space. We have also ULOG D2, you probably know that is way more flexible, and that, that, that is not sending logs through the kernel log buffer. It's using that link. And so the user space demo basically receives those log events, and, and it, the, it's going to represent it in the way that, that the user needs. As I said, very flexible. You can represent the packet in, in very different outputs and so on, or even decide to, to place that log message somewhere else. So. Um, but this is something that users have been asking. So, and it was very easy to, to, to add. And so basically here, just after this update, this little this small update, we can just log. We can use the native log and prefix. And we are going to, to obtain this kind of log message that you probably already know. There is another update that happened. It was Michel Kubacek. Um, he was pushing this for a while. He's got uh, basically people that uh, wanted to use this in control environments with containers, with name spaces. And this login was disabled for security reasons. So one of the containers could not spam and uh, the, the kernel log, log uh, buffer. So basically, there is a toggle now. Um, that you can switch on, and so you are going to get from all namespaces, you are going to get all, all those log messages that are triggered. So also, very small incremental update. Oh, no, this is not. OK. Connection tracking updates. This is work that Florian has been uh, performing in this field. So basically, we used, to have, we used to have two fields to represent the connection tracking information in the SK buff on different catch lines. The NFCT info was only three bits, actually. We only, need, we only need five. We have five combinations. It's new with reply. doesn't make sense. So it's new, established, established reply, related, related reply. OK? So we need three bits. And we have the SKB NF, NFCT pointer to the contract object. And so the solution uh, that, that Florian has upstream is basically uh, rename, well, we have to rename that to skb and, uh, underscore ct. And we are going to store those three B that we have in nfct info into the pointer, into the pointer that we have, that we use to, to store the contract object. So the trick here is to um, make sure that the, that the memory management allocates objects at eight bytes. That is basically similar to the trick that we were already using it, using an, in um, in SKB DST, right? So um, he has also removed the co the contract timer. Now we have a garbage collector. It's basically a work queue. It's sweeping the the connection tracking table. We don't need uh, this struct timer anymore. And also he has removed this is this item is actually not right there. It should be 
should be out of it. Anyway, so he has also uh, converted the, 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 the hash table that we have in NAT, the by address hash table by, by the resizable hash table in the arch RH list variant that allows, allows having uh, several elements with the same, that can be identified with the same tuple. Okay, so, um, and, and well, the result is half, according to some reports that um, we have received, is we, we were told, is that we, some, some users are observing half, half less CPU consumption than before, after all these changes. So this is going to have an impact on, on performance. It's going to get it better, obviously, so. What else? Um, the, the hooks that, we, we have basically two hooks in the communication tracking system. You explained that, right? So, so I can skip the, the, more, the details. So, so those, those hooks are registered whenever contract, the contract module was installed. Since we have now per net namespace hooks and, um, and we don't necessarily need to register for them all just because one need them. Right, it has a it has a performance impact on this. So what we can do is avoid that hook cost, avoid skip the hook registration by um, by only registering in on demand based on what we have from the policy. So if the policy indicates that uh, the stateful filtering needs to happen for some reason, and the defragmentation also because some of the, the existing extensions needed. So, for example, for deep proxy, not only for safe filtering. So, in that case, we, we are going to get the hooks register. So, so this only this is going to only have an impact in in the in the people that need it. And uh, the UDP light code was basically a copy and paste of the UDP connection tracking helper. Uh, just like we do in the stack, it has been basically removed, and we have. We got Florian got the, the, the bits merge to the little bits that that differ from, from the from the UDP. And now SCTP is now built in. And this has been a problem. I mean we took a patch time ago. Uh, I, I yes, I took a patch time ago that uh, because some people have security concerns on the following scenario is basically if you have SCTP flows and you forgot to mob probe the NF contract SCTP tracker, contract was defaulting on the, the, the generic, we have a generic protocol tracker doing some very, very basic tracking, just making sure that, that just annotating if we have seen traffic in both directions, so we have, so we can keep some minimal set of states to perform the, f the stateful filtering, right? So basically, if, if you were, you forgot to, to mod probe this, this uh, tracker, and uh, you were having SCTP flows, and after that patch, the SCTP flows were rejected. Basically, the, this, this patch that we took for security concerns is, was dropping traffic if, uh, if there is a better module available, it, I mean, for example, if there is an STP helper, connection tracking uh, protocol helper, and it was not loaded, and so in some ways it was, there were users complaining that it, it was this, this was breaking the, the current setup. So, so this, this, one of the solutions, that, the one that we adopted is that you just place the STP um, built in, and also this was also Resolving, fixing, um, addressing complaints from people that seems to be using SCTP and then point to point to uh, small home routers as the cause for breaking SCTP. I guess that uh, other ISP and telcos are probably to blame, but uh, just to make sure that uh, any of the Linux-based, you know, filter-based routers out there, that are quite a lot of them, so. Just, just provide a good default, so to see if this improves the situation. But anyway, so what else? New infrastructure that we got is name objects. We had this already in IP tables. The name of this infrastructure in, in IP tables is NFAC. It's 
the, the original name is the IP Table Extended Accounting Infrastructure. It was basically uh, having its own, has, it has its own Netlink interface. That has its problems because IP Tables is not having a, a native Netlink interface and NFAC is, so it doesn't really integrate great, but it's okay. It was, it was okay for, for what we needed at that time. So it's been already six, seven years, I think, since then. So basically, this infrastructure allows us to, to, to create name counters. Why these name counters? Because there were people complaining that, that polling, polling the rule set to fetch counters was, was a real hassle, right? So, the, 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 so uh, when arguing on, on this feature, the, the final conclusion we got is that it would be good to have objects that we can refer to names, right? We just started with counters, right? So, and this ended, this, this resulted in a very simple tool, is nfac add and the name of the counter you want, then um, you could list 16 counters and you could perform also atomic dump and reset. Then from IP tables, you require one rule to reference for each object that obviously has scalability problems, right? And later on, Linaro uh, needed to, to have quota, so this code, this code was grown to support named quotas, and specifically also a new feature that allows NFAC to, to report when the quota is, where the quota has expired. So, First, first thought was, can we reuse this infrastructure for NF tables? And it was not very easy. It's not very easy to do. Specifically because in NFT, we have a two-phase commit protocol that allows us to perform atomic incremental updates over Netlink. Okay? So, um, it was not, I mean, I started hacking on that. It was not looking nice. Okay? So, so and also NFAC was grown code. We just started with, with stateful counters with a name. It was not envisioned to have anything else that Linaro people, they took a, we took a while discussing how to accommodate quotas there. We managed, it took a little while, but it's, it was upstream a long time ago. So, but then some more people follow up and said, I would like to have control on more stateful objects that we want to have. For example, if I set some rate limit after you go over, if you go over some quota, some given quota, I want to apply some some rate limit, the kind of things that uh, telcos are doing, right? So, uh, so uh, it would be good to, to support other objects too. And again, for NFAC, we could only we could only add we, we could only add one rule to refer to objects. So we were we were kind of uh, Taking that that limitations that we have for IP tables that ob obviously is not no 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 way out. We don't want that. Okay, we want to use maps intensively, and that has to. I mean, if user it, it's optional up to user, but as soon as the user changes its mindset, it should be it should be taking advantage from that new feature. Okay, so new infrastructure, but it's generic one. Okay, so basically we got three new commands for NF tables. And this new commands allows us to create, to add, to delete, and get objects, name objects. Okay? The original patch was referring to these two stateful objects, but now they are just name objects. We, could, we, are, we are also accommodating some stateless objects. I'll, I'll explain you why in a follow-up follow slide. Okay? So we, we have infrastructure to register these new objects. We have a structure that basically model how the object looks like. It's a, it's a tell me, describe me what this object type is. It's basically a, a extending the Netlink interface that we have, adding the attributes that describe, that describe those objects, and we have a, a eval, evaluation function that is called from the packet path. Okay, so every time, every time a, a packet gets, hits that object, the action that we perform in the packet is happening there. Okay? So what we have now is counter and quota support. We it should be very easy to, to to extend this to support rate limit. And we could have all sort of stateful objects or any kind of object that could be useful to, 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 be, to be referenced from the rule set. Okay? 
what else? So this is showing just a, an example. So basically, we have a, a command that, also, uh, that, that, that you can use to, to add the object. This is add counter to the counters. Counters, they are um, tables. In NF tables are already top level object infrastructure. It's the, the, the container object, right? So everything, everything has to be contained in a table. So we have this container, this, this counter object. That is, the name is HTTP traffic. You can use any random name, OK? So I can, I'm also adding a quota. You can use the same name for the same, for two different object kinds. That was something that also was requested, because uh, ideally, um, you, you would probably use, if, if this actually represents a user, you're mapping this to users, to, to, the, to the limitations that you apply to your a given user. So you have user, number, blah, blah, blah. And you use the same name for all objects that you have, right? And then um, you could do the IP tables way. So the IP tables way is basically just use one single rule for this. But this is this is this, as I said, this has this poses uh, scalability problem. So we can use it with with maps. I didn't create this explicitly, but you can f you figure out, right? what you have to do to create this object. It shouldn't be hard, right? So here, what we have is a mapping between, based on the TCP destination port, so based on what we match here, we are going to use the respective object, OK? Good. This can be also used from, 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 uh, from a dynamic set or sets that can be updated in runtime. Right? Not, not only this constant, we call them anonymous. They are not anonymous. They have, it's actually the, the fact that they are um, deleted by when the rule is removed. Okay? These rules, I am referring to these rules, these, these rules that define a set between braces. Right? So we call that anonymous sets. So anyway, um, we could add maps too. So this is basically mapping. In an IPv4 address and a counter object. And then we only need one single rule to do this mapping. And we can, in runtime, we can create objects and add mappings to, to, that, to that bad guy's map. So this would be basically for this element, we add a new element. So to bad guys, this, this IP address is a bad guy. And we are going to account it using the bad guy one object. Okay? We can obviously list existing counters, existing quotas, existing whatever object that we implement on this infrastructure. We have atomic dump and reset. Basically, uh, when you call this command, NFT reset, it's going to list what is currently in the kernel, and it's going to reset it in an atomic fashion. OK? It was very good that Eric came up with, with a very uh, nice way to, to, to sort out this, because I. I got a bit of hassle in that <laughs> in that patch, but anyway. Um, and and same thing for quotas. Quotas you can represent also the amount of quota that has been used, and so so you can you, you are going to fetch what what is already there. That is good for um, I mean for accountability purpose, right? So we don't lose that interesting stateful information. This is something that Florian made. Um, it took us a while to figure out how to integrate connection tracking helpers into NF tables. We got quite a lot of discussions. We wanted to do it exactly in the same way as NFT, uh, as IP tables. But then we have that concern on, on, on having to add one single rule to attach one helper. So we want to use maps, OK? So, so finally, what, uh, what we did is, um, we integrated this new infrastructure into the, this, this name object thing. Okay? So we could even have different policy for different helpers, and depending on, on, on where the traffic is coming from, and we, get, we achieve all that flexibility that we want to provide with NFT. So oh, this, is, this is just to remind you that automatic helper assignment has been already disabled. Okay? It's only disabled in the CCTL. I mean, it's, it has been, even if it was unsecure, we have keep it for, I think it's been four or five years. So uh, there were people 
still complaining though about that. So anyway, um, if you if you want to get more information on that, obtain my information on that, you read this document that Eric Leblanc wrote about it, and that provides all the details about that. So basically, an attacker with the automatic uh, assignment could handcraft a packet and just punch a hole into the, in, into the firewall. Nasty thing, not good. Okay, so, so now um, you have to, to, to specify explicitly the helper that you want to attach and, and things like what, what, from where exactly this is going to be allowed and what port range and so on. This is an example, this is a very basic example of probably what you don't have to do, right? That is exactly add a rule to a rule that recovers the, that, same, that same behavior. But if you, as I said, if you read this documentation, you, you, you will understand that you have to restrict, it's good to restrict this to your firewalls, okay? So um, what we used to do is basically from the helper path, this is now obsolete. But it can be it can be enabled with with yes, Equin was I mean just switching the value of a CCTL. So if someone uh, didn't know not, not this so far and it's out of time, it still can recover for some little time this behavior until we remove it. Okay, so you you still have more time to fix your setup. So uh, basically, what we were doing is uh, control helpers were were controlled in Mopro by Mopro. That was good. That was good. In, in probably uh, probably the previous decade, right? When we have no containers and so on, and so we were just more pro uh, globally enabled, right? But these days, this is not this is not acceptable, right? So more pro is not good. And on top of that, we are spending precious time from the packet path to look up for a helper. We have a very small hash table, and we are just going to inspect if there is a an entry in that hash table that is going to map. With, with, with a port that describes the helper. It's basically a small tuple. It's protocol, so uh, layer, layer three, layer four, and, and, and ports. And so we are spending cycles in, in finding, in figuring out what helper we want to use. All this just because at that time, it was considered to be convenient to do, to do magic stuff. Um, so, and then attach the helper, right? So. Not, not very good. I mean, assuming that this is a slow path and, and helpers have a very specific scope and so on. Anyway, so this is what we got. So how can we do better now in NFT? So we can instantiate one specific helper. Okay, we, we are basically using this name object infrastructure. So this would also allow us to, to expose a specific uh, configuration of, of, of these helpers. These helpers, they have some um, internal configuration parameters. Most of them, they are not exposing that, but it, it would be good to, to provide that flexibility, though. So, so basically, what you get now is just yes, you said that you want an instance of the SIP helper for IPv4 and EDP, OK? And then from your rule, if you do it like this, it's going to be exactly in the IP tables way. So one rule, you attach one helper. But this is, as I said, we could just do it in one go by having a map between ports and, and the instance of the helper that we have just defined. This is already in the tree, something that, okay, no, not here. Okay, so um, more stuff we've been, we've been working on is migrating, providing tools to migrate from IP tables to NFT. So when I have the chance to, to meet with, with my sysadmin friends in, in Spain, they tell me, you know, Pablo, we have a, an IP table rule set with 5,000, 10,000 rules, right? And what, what are you going to do to convince me to migrate to NFT, huh? Because I don't have any, any incentive to do so, right? So okay, I, I start scratching my head and said, I have to do something to fix this, okay? Let's try to make this migration comfortable. So we provide a translation infrastructure. Actually, we have more than the translation infrastructure, we have also infrastructure ready. So we can probably at some point, once we get numbers that IP tables, NF tables is exactly performing or even outperforming the, the IP tables engine, we could kill part of the code, the X table, IP underscore table, and so on. Basically, the engine, something to consider, and, and use the NF tables infrastructure. But apart from that, now what is most simple thing is just translate, translate your rules in. 
So I can show you. I don't, I'm not going to have enough time to make a demo. I was planning to make a demo. But basically, we have these tools. The IP tables will translate. You pass your IP tables rules head. And if there is a translation available, it's going to, to do this automatically for you. It's a very, very simple tool at this stage. So it's just mapping IP tables one to one to NFT. So, so far, the uh, sysadmin has to perform the, um, the smart mindset change, right? So rearrange uh, its rule set to see if it can collapse several rules into one single and rearrange and so on. So, um, but we, will have, we are also planning to have some tool, some extension in NFT that will, will, will provide suggestions to the user to, to, to optimize the rule set at some point to say, hey, you know, I have seen that you have four dimensions and these four dimensions require four lookups, so I can probably use one concatenation initially for two of the, uh, of two of the values of your tuple, and then uh, add two jumps to chains, to non-base chains, and there you perform another check of your key. So you, the, the, all this is just to reduce the number of inspection in your rule set, right? So just to find, I inspect one rule, two rule, three rule action as soon as possible, okay? So this is going to skip the demo. Um, what's, what's following up? This is something that I've been discussing in NetConf. It's something that David mentioned in the previous NetFilter workshop. So we need, we need a, a, a virtual machine description. The NFT has a specialized network-based virtual machine, Not currently with 25 instructions, right? So we have to, to have a way to, to expose what instructions are available for several reasons. Because if we have an, a, way, a more performant way to express uh, our rules, we should use it if it's available and stop using the old one. If we have an old NFT binary, oh, sorry, a new NFT binary with an old kernel, it shouldn't try to, to represent things in a way that this kernel cannot do, okay? So all those kind of combinations that we used to deal with in AP tables, right? So making sure that all tooling, all kind of versions and so on, all these combinations, they keep working. And um, just basically exposing to user space the instruction available, the, command, the commands that the NF tables interface provides, and also describe the netlink attributes in, in, in they, they describe the, the netlink attributes in TLB format basically uh, the attributes that are available for that instruction, there are instructions that get extended, get new attributes. The new attributes allows you to, to enable some new features sometimes. For example, we will need a new attribute for the, um, for the quota instruction to indicate the mode. It's, it's packet-based or byte-based. So now this, this VM version doesn't have that support, so we introduce this description, and the, and the user space knows, oh, okay, I can do packet-based quota, okay? It was not available before. Or, or, or sorry, user, you cannot do it instead of getting some critic error like inval or even worse, right? So, and then scratch your head and say, hmm, what is going wrong? This thing is broken, right? So, um, this is also a useful for hardware offloads. Um, the, 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 the offload that I have seen so far, the hardware that I have seen so far, I mean, the TCAM base, is, it, it has its own limitations. And um, we would not like that, that, that the hardware limitations propagate to the software path in any way. So that needs to be clearly, clearly separated. So software can keep evolving in a way that doesn't affect hardware and either way, okay? So, so um, we want to provide also this abstracted, this virtual machine description you basically tell also from a NFT perspective, what NFT can do with hardware, okay? So no layout is exposed to user space. It's, this is based on NFT, on what NFT can do, right? And this is going to be, again, from user space, NFT is, will, will generate or just uh, signal errors to the user indicating what it can do. It's something that this new interface, we, we may have a command at some point that we can use to, um, to, to, to get some text representation or even, even JSON for robots, right? So, so for example, one, one, one very clear example where, where we have 
problems to map these to hardware is Meta Layer 4 Protocol. Uh, layer 4, Meta Layer 4 Protocol ha has its own specific semantics. It's basically searching for the first transport uh, header that we find in the packet. Okay? This is in IPv4, this is very obvious. It's just the next, what, what, what the next protocol of the IPv4 header indicates. But in IPv6, we, have, we may have all kind of extension headers and so on that, that, that we, don't want to, we don't want to say that, hey, this is your next, I mean, we don't want to say that meta layer protocol is this extension. No, no, we want to jump to the transport layer that, that has the relevant information that is more, what most users need, right? So, so in this case, for TCAM-based hardware, or at least the one I have seen, this is not, it, it, we cannot express this. So this BM description should take to user space. You cannot use Meta Layer 4 Proto. You have to use IP6 next header, OK? And, and then you, are, you become aware of the limitations of what this implies, OK? So, so you cannot do the, the smart thing that this is exactly exposed in user space. This, so these little semantic differences emerge, and the user is, the user is well aware of it. Okay. So also it's good if the driver gets out of sync. So some of the feature that that, the, that we have in the software plane is not yet because the the, 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 the driver developer has, doesn't have time to update the driver. So um, it's also good if 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 we have this description because it just going to, to keep this out of thing, thing under control. So it would be a command to retrieve this. We will place it somewhere in a file. And we will find a way to compile breakage, to compile break if the description is not available. And this should be from NFT. This should be transparent to the user. So NFT will inquire for this command to obtain the capabilities. But also, it should be good if we provide some commands so this abstract des description is exposed to user space. So the user can re read this in some text space, or if it's a robot, some JSON format to do this, OK? Sets. So um, we don't expose our packet set representation in NFT. So the user cannot say, I want to use a hash table. No, this is not the way it works in NFT. So you provide a description of what you need. You may provide the elements that you want to insert in the set, what size this set is going to have. Uh, if you are going to use ranges, uh, you may not want to specify how many, so many elements you are going to have in the set. All that is a description that the user space provides. And then from the kernel side, we have a big O notation that just provides some uh, the scalability. But it represents the scalability of the set backend representation. So based on that, and the more information, of course, we get from user space, the, the more specific is the description we get, the best from the kernel we can do as the selection of the backend. OK? So we will also need more set backends for the currently we only have very little, only three. The hash table via resizable hash table that, for example, is not needed if, if the set is constant. constant. OK, why, do we, why, uh, why are we going to space cycle in a resizable hash table that is not going, ever going to be resized, right? So uh, we can probably have a, very, a way more simple, more performant way to represent this hash table. So we have an RB3 that we want to get rid of because it, it, it has a central spin lock, and it's, going to cast, it's, going to, it's, it's already causing us problems too. And in terms of performance. It's the only thing we have so far. But once we kill it, we, I mean, we can kill it freely because this is not being exposed. And this, this gives us, this give us the flexibility that, that we need. We don't want to keep maintaining code that users should not be using, OK? And, and, and a bit mad that now it's limited to key length of smaller than uh, 16 bits, so the, the, the bitmap side doesn't explode. Um, currently, it, it, is supporting, it is supporting dynamic updates. And hmm, it should be also possible to, to provide a, a more simple representation for, for constant sets, OK? It, it, and it performs, it performs better than, 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 than hash table. So this is something that we don't have, but probably it's good if we provide more description for we, we keep enriching the description that we provide from user space. So we, for example, could define a subset and say, a, a, a set that is going to basically represent what is in this range. 
And it's going to be good because the kernel can say, oh, this is very small. I can use a bitmap. And so the user, from the user's, user space, we, yeah, we, we will just need, when creating the set, just set on a, a flag to indicate this is a virtual or subset or whatever. And then we have to make sure meta information is converted to network by order because of main compare. And probably we need some basic big num thing to subtract, calculate offset for 24 bits for IPv6 addresses. And what else? There are, there are people asking for a card show for elements in maps. So if we have something like this, if we want to perform a default action on something that we don't find, we just add this wildcard thing, and we are going to, to drop the traffic. OK. Uh, as we don't expose the backend representations, we can implement very silly way to represent the rule set for th things that for for very small sets. Probably we, I, 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 I am, we are starting to collect numbers now, perform numbers. But basically, if you create a set with only two elements, it's way too much to create a hash table for this. Okay. And if it's proved to be that the hash table even outperform in that case, we could, 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 we could really get rid of that because we don't expose that set. So we, don't have, we have that flexibility, OK? What else? Um, we have new, new commands. We have a create command. It's basically there for almost every object. It just provides the, the, the please bail out if the object already exists, OK? And now we have also inverted set lookups, OK? Not here, OK? Next, next, um, people like names. They, from time to time, they, they come to the mailing list asking for, I would like to filter based on name. No, that's crazy. Don't do it, OK? Don't do it. Uh, this is not exactly what, what you want to do. Or well, this is not DNS tables, right? And so uh, if you want to do this, you, you, you can you can rely on, on, you can heavily use the, the variable definitions that we have. So you can even have a robot that is going to create a file that contains all the definitions that are going to map with all the names that you have and keep this in a rule set and then import that from your rule set and just reference to that variable, okay? And even you could just keep that bad guy's file that is automatically generated or partially automatically generated that required the supervision of some human or whatever separated from this. Just to improve maintainability of this. Rule the deletion description. So users are complaining so far about, um, about the fact that they have to list the rule set, obtain a unique handle number based on this. If the rule set is, is, is large, this is going to, I mean, it takes a while to find, to figure out where is the handle number of the rule. And you can make a mistake. Oh, I took the, the wrong one, and you delete it, and you, yeah, you, you just screw it up, right? So, um, so it would be good to have a way to, to achieve what we have in, in IP tables, right? This NFT delete rule, and then the description. So, so basically, the, the, the infrastructure in the kernel is already there. We have to, still, this is not available in NFT user space. Um, it's, it's a more, this, this change, uh, I started working on this thinking that it was going to be shorter, actually, and then I, I realized that it's taking, it's more complicated, specifically because there are asymmetries between the way we represent the rule set from, from the insert path, from the linear path, I mean, the path where we take the, the policy in text and we generate the bytecode. And by when, because NFT is a compiler and the compiler, but when we take back the bytecode, we, we get back the rule set representation. So currently, the structures that we're using to represent both are not exactly mapping one to one. It's just a matter of fixing this inconsistency. I think the test, the test infrastructure was reporting something like 100 or something test failing last time I checked. And this is the last slide. OK, Jamal? You have to be nice with me, Jamal. <laughs> and improve error reporting. And that this I can escape. Jamal, he stole this topic from me yesterday, you evil guy, okay? So, but, huh? 
last time you do this, not to me, eh? Okay, no problem. Uh, I love them all. Anyway, so basically the idea is, is this is the way we, we report errors now. It's quite, as you can see, sparse grain, right? It's like, <laughs> uh, no, no entry, but one no entry, what does it mean is no table, no chain, or no, no what, no object with that name, right? So now, um, Johannes, he, he has pushed a patch set that basically has, uh, has collected all the design ideas with the casting. I don't know if it's already in the tree. <laughs> He's still working, right? Okay, so basically the idea is that we can just say exactly what is the problem. So it doesn't exist and we can say the table. Come on, okay? So um, anything else? That's all, okay? Probably one question, which is shouldn't last more than 30 seconds. I, I, I have a microphone. Is it working? Okay. Yeah. So, uh, I think what's great about NF tables is that it provides a user-facing user interface that it's easy for users to become comfortable with. You have the abstractions of rules, tables, sets, and uh, uh, maps, different kinds of things like that. And I think for the, if you look at the ingress net filter, it's a, more on the stateless side, right? It's, it's, it's not getting into all the details. We have all this complicated state that's associated with an SKB and things like that. And then let's look at another area, which is that we have layers of, of detail. So if you look at something like XDP, at the lowest level, there are people who want to control everything and they want to write BPF programs in assembler. Okay, those guys are kind of crazy, but they can do that if they want. And then we have people who are not interested in learning how BPF assembler works and they're willing to write C code to write their filters and stuff like that. I do not think it's a stretch to take it one level further to provide a nice user front end like this and generate BPF programs that people can run based upon NF rules. You could do everything you do now with sets, like you, you abstract away the set selection from the user's description of how the data is, like intervals and things of that nature. You could say, okay, this BPF map maps to this user's use case more better than any other specification. So I think it's really interesting from that perspective and also, I don't think it's practical to translate from multiple VMs into different NPUs in hardware drivers because the, the uh, Netronome uh, JIT is very complicated. It took a lot of work and we have to build even more infrastructure for them to, to, to be efficient. So I think it would be, it's, interest, it, it's very important to think about consolidating all the complexity that we're generating by representing all these different kinds of uh, things, both from the user facing down to what actually happens inside the kernel. Okay, thanks. Let's give a round of applause for Pablo. Thank you. And Florian. Okay, uh, so I don't know if you guys have observed, normally, yes, we do have keynotes, but it's not from some VP of marketing. Okay, it's a member of our community, and we typically have another member of our community who has known this person who would like to embarrass them to introduce them. So for our next speaker, I'm going to have Alex introduce Jesse. Start a timer two minutes. Okay. Okay, slide two, or, yeah, so you'll start the stopwatch. <laughs> okay, we're just gonna, do you have Florian's slides? Part of, which slides? Uh, well, if you can't find them, I'm gonna have to. Yeah, what, what, what are the oh, slides? Are, are these it? This is it? Yeah. Okay, you're on, you got two minutes. Okay, just very quick, so I'm going to skip this a bit. So um, this is about a toy project I've been working on, um, about making packet steering available in NF tables, so you can send packets to other CPUs. So we al already have some stuff like uh, RPS or RFS, um, but it's not so flexible with regard to configuration. So what I have at the moment is some sample code that extends NFT's meta med, uh, ex uh, expression, so you can set a CPU and then it 
steers the packet to the CPU by returning NF stolen, so the CPU that processed the packet will just go back to the um, RX NAPI, and um, it will uh, wake up a work queue. So you could split away some packets that you know that are, will be more expensive to process, for instance, IPsec or co um, complex IP tables filtering or whatever, or to have dedicated forwarding CPUs or whatever. Um, it's still in early toy stage, which means it's basically it compiles and it seems to not crash the kernel. Um, it uses per CPU data, work queue, uses SKB array, which uh, really fits this um, consumer producer model. So we just um, place in the SKB into the SKB array, the NF hook state, and that's it. And the other, the, the other CPU will just wake up um, the work queue, and then the work queue does batch dequeuing of whatever is there and just invokes the OK function that is in the, uh, in the, um, in the FOOC state to um, process the packet in the into the next stage. So that's it. And the rule is to get numbers, uh, how, how much of co cost it is to have this um, extra penalty of pushing the packet to the other CPU. And um, if that looks not too bad, then um, it would be good to um, make it so that we can resume processing in the next netfilter hook instead of the next OK function. So instead of going from pre-routing to input or pre-routing to forward, pr pr um, process the next table instead. That's it.